God, this wave lasted for long enough for me to get onto one knee, get the ring out of the armpit of my wetsuit, take it out of the box and, and hold it and propose to her. And yeah, she definitely wasn't expecting it. But uh, after the minute I proposed to her, she said yes. It was incredible and, and we had a really nice meal with her parents afterwards. But... Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Leighton. On this episode, we speak to Pete Abel, who's, um, I think he's part of the Muddy Brothers, which is, anybody who doesn't know, that's the guys that surf at Seven Boar. And he also owns and runs a surf school down in Morgan Porth. Yeah, King's Surf School. And he also surfs at Seven Boar, as Leighton just said, but went viral not long ago, for proposing to his wife while surfing. His now wife, yeah. well, His now wife, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't propose to his wife then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, proposed to another wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he proposed to his wife while surfing the Seven Boar. So, uh, yeah, he tells us all about that in, yeah. uh, in this interview. It's a cool story. Yeah, but before we go into it, our sponsors for today's show, we have North Core, our usual sponsor, and to get 15% off anything you order from North Core, from seat covers to changing mats to robes to surf accessories, use the discount code UK Surf Show 2022. That's all capitals, UK Surf Show 2022. And that will get you 15% off anything you order until March the 31st. Yes, and we also have another sponsor for this show. So another clothing one. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, so you get loads of clothes. Money <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, they are called Slab, and they're a surfing brand started by two brothers who live in Scotland. Yeah, two brothers in Scotland love surfing. Their clothes are made from organic cotton and recycled polyester, and they're all sourced ethically. Yeah, on their website, they've got a few surfing blogs as well, which is interesting. It's all about surfing in Scotland. So yeah. That uh, makes me want to go and surf Scotland. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Blogs and interviews with li- like local surf communities, and also they give ten percent of their profits to the Wave Project, helping kids through surf therapy. Uh, we have a discount code for them, so if you want anything from Slab, that is slabsurf.co.uk, and use the code UK Surf Show fifteen, all one word, all capitals. That's UK Surf Show fifteen. And that will get you 15% off anything you order from Slab. Nice beanies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's jump into it with Peter Abel. Good morning, it's Pete. Pete Abel. I'm 38 years old and I own a surf school in Morgan Port in Cornwall. Yeah, so uh, welcome on to the podcast, Pete. We're uh, super happy to have you on. And uh, the the reason why we asked you on is because you're also uh, one of the guys that surf the Seven Boar. Is that right? Yeah, it's a, it's a funny one. I've been doing it ever since I was 16 and I just became obsessed with it. And a lot of people will try it, do it for the one-off time and then they'll leave it. But for some reason, it, it grabbed hold of me and I, I became addicted to doing it in all sorts of conditions. So did you, uh, you grew up near the Seven Ball then, obviously? Yeah, I'm originally from Gloucester and my house is about five minutes away from the river. And I learned to surf when I was sort of roughly 16, but by the time I was 17, I'd sussed out that the ball was something that happened. And um, I, I went in, I used to go in at the same spot every time on my own and wonder why no one else was there. And I probably, I missed it about a hundred times and caught it about two times. And then uh, I started talking to the other guys that were a bit older and confidence grew and they started showing me more and more places that I could get in. And, and the, uh, yeah, you can get, you know, you can get a ride for up to an hour if you're on, if you're in the right place at the right time. Wow. It's, um, it's one of those ones though, isn't it? Like, like we were chatting before, it's a very well kept secret of, you know, you've got to be so careful what you say of where, like where you're getting in or where you can go from or where, where other people go, because obviously it's a dangerous thing to do. You know, it's a, it's a dangerous place. There's lots of stuff in the water and stuff like that. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can quite easily get in trouble there. But it sounds like... Uh, also, you don't want the circus coming to town, do you, either, yeah. when, <laughs> when, when you know it's going off? Like, if you, if you tell everybody about it, then there'll be 500 surfers turn up. You know, it's so true, actually. I feel guilty even talking about it. But, you know, it's obviously all over the magazines and it's on the news a lot. You know, it's, it's 
it's publicized everyone knows about it i think it's just such a quirky way that doesn't interest that many people and there's so many variables you know you could go on a massively big forecast and it could be a five star bore on the website it can be utter rubbish because the wind's blowing the wrong direction there's too much water in the river or there's a high pressure looming over gloucestershire or you know there's so many things it could even even the amount of water flowing down the river because it's been heavy rain the day before, you know, there's so much to work out that you've got to be quite geeky really to, uh, to master it. <laughs> yeah. So what's the, how long have you stood on a board on the seven ball then? What's your longest wave? You know, probably because we've, we've had GoPros attached to our boards, which is sort of the only way you can really tell sometimes. And I, I remember recording for sort of almost, almost half an hour standing up, which is crazy. It's definitely a bit of a leg burner, but There'll be sections where you sometimes want to lie back down again because it turns yeah. to white water. You, you don't want to fall off it. So, but you, can, you know, you could be on the wave for up to an hour if you can connect certain places and you, you've read the wave perfectly. Wow. You know, it all depends on the shallowness of the water and everything. But there's, yeah, you, you know, and that's what draws you back because you'll get one really long ride and you'll go back the next day and the conditions are exactly the same. But for some reason, you just can't get to where you got to last time and it, it's a it's a weird thing and you know the guys that do it are all really friendly and but like you said it's it's got a dangerous side to it and it is actually pretty dangerous if you just went on your own you know especially at night that's the real bad thing to do you, you can't really see what's in the river there could be huge trees and some of the mud as well you could you could get stuck in the mud in certain places and not get out and you could get sent over to the other side of the river and not get back over to the English side and get stuck in the Welsh side. And you've got no phone on you and you can't actually get home. You have to flag over a car and hope he's going to pick you up in your muddy wetsuit stinking of piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, there's, there's a lot of variables there, isn't there? And I mean, what, how do you, how do you deal with the other thing of it is like, like you say, if you, if you get in the river and you're on your board for an hour you end up, what is, I don't know how fast it moves, what is it, four, six, eight miles an hour? You end up like five, eight miles away from where you were. How'd you get back? Yeah, and that's happened so many times. You know, the rule is you can't jump off. Once you're on it, you've got to commit to however long you can ride it for. But the tactics are normally to drive, park your car somewhere, let the flow of the river take you out to sea. You know, towards Bristol, and then you obviously don't want to go too far because it can get really dangerous if you go too far. But then surf back to the van. You know, that's the tactics. But if you've got to the van and the wave's still good, you've got to carry on. And I've definitely found myself sort of two miles away from that. <laughs> and know sometimes you end up, you know, walking across fields because you think you can make a shortcut back to the van. You don't have a clue where you are, and you've got no phone. And then the other guys are wondering whether you're okay or not. And you can't contact them, and it's really it's quite an adventure. <laughs> I suppose as well, like if you if you come off the if you come off the board, it's not like when you come off in the sea where you know you, you kind of got a little bit of respite when you come off the board. You got obviously sets that come in. So this is just one big body of flowing water. So that's got debris in, and it just keeps going. I suppose when, if you came off and you're then behind the wave, you still get taken along with, with the water. Yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, the flow afterwards is unbelievable. You know, you, there's no way you can keep your ground or swim against it or paddle against it. So you, you've got to, well, one, you've got to avoid the trees because if you get your leash wrapped in a branch, it can, you know, you can drown. A few of the guys have got quick releases on their leashes just in case they get caught around a branch. The flow of the river's taking them one way, but the leash won't let them go. They're getting dragged under. And so what we try and do is let the flow of the river take you, try and find a safe get out spot and then paddle for your life and try and make it to a place where you think you can scramble back out again <laughs> so do you do you have a board to surf the seven ball like one that you don't mind getting dinged and knocked about a bit or yeah yeah definitely you know i've actually i've never surfed this in the sea because it's a bit of a dog and it's, it's hard to turn but i've got one of those 10 foot bicks you know those pop out plastic bicks they're about 20 years old now and like, yeah, i wouldn't even take an, an expensive longboard really you can if some people shape fiberglass longboards especially for the river and there's a few people that get really into the design of it and, and you know you don't want any do you want any concave because it'll slow you down on the fat bits you know how much volume do you really want in it because if it gets good you, you want to be able to turn it still and people are even talking about like the the golf ball effect you know if you gloss the bottom of your board does that make water stick to the board more but if you sand finish the bottom of your board will you get more glide out of it you know it's hilarious but <laughs> yeah moral of the story is take something big yeah yeah 
I suppose it's different, isn't it, to surfing in on uh, a normal wave? Yeah, totally. Because basically what happens there is you'll, you'll be on this amazing wave. You'll get a real buzz from it. And all of a sudden, the river will go deep and the wave will disappear from underneath you. And you think, shit, if I just had another four foot of length on my board, I might have made it through this fat section and back to where it breaks again. Because you'll often fall off the wave and look 100 yards down the river and it reforms again. You think, damn, I shouldn't have taken this five, six twin fin out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you'd be getting guys turning up with 18 foot boards soon, you know, like the old, Boats, they're yeah. Called. <laughs> yeah this is the other thing there is you know obviously a bit of cheating yeah, so- on. you can sup it and you can you know you can kayak it and stuff but to surf it obviously has that slight slight more element of skill i suppose <laughs> yeah definitely have you ever uh come into any uh how should we put it compromising situations when you've been surfing the ball <laughs> it, it's very friendly and i think you know and we've got to, we've got to respect the fact that it's gonna draw a crowd when it's been predicted to be quite big you know there is a website you can go onto and then everyone just goes oh it's going to be big that day and you know there's going to be hundreds of people going to watch and, and partake and it pinches around corners and if there's 10 of you in the same spot when it gets to the corner there's only enough space for two of you say and it's whoever's on the end has got to get sort of punched off, accidentally <laughs> elbowed off, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, how many, t- I don't want to give too much away of it really, because I, I know it's kind of a little bit protected, but uh, how many times a year do you, on average, do you think it's possible to surf? Yeah, just uh, whatever the website says, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant answer. No, it's Leave not- it at that, because you, you covered yourself there. That's an absolutely brilliant answer. <laughs> <laughs> so um also uh there's another little story isn't there with the seven boar it's uh, a special place to you um and so i wonder if you wanted to tell the listeners what you what ended up going viral for you on the seven boar oh god you know this is there's a bit of a story to this because my father proposed to my mum on a full moon very close to the place that i proposed to my wife and uh, he was really ill in hospital and he sadly didn't make it to the time that I got to propose. But a week before I proposed, he was in hospital extremely. Oh, Ill. no. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, no. It's, tr- it's a really tragic story. It's really, really sad. He's an absolute legend, my dad. But I managed to tell him that I wanted to propose to my wife instead of using the uh, the full moon to just sit on the riverbank, you know, be a bit of a wimp and just propose to Andrew with the, the moonlight shining towards her. I wanted to get in the river and um, it's the full moon really that creates the tide. You know, whenever you see a full moon in the sky, there's normally a big tide going and that, that's the same with the beaches as well. Yeah. So I told my dad I was going to propose to my wife while surfing the boar and he thought it was an amazing idea. And because he'd agreed to it and I told him I had to do it. <laughs> but what makes it even more interesting is that my wife, you know, that I fancied at uni for years and years but never did anything about 10 years after I'd finished uni, she was surfing the ball. And which, you know, it's rare to see girls on the ball. It's, you know, there's a handful that do it regularly, but hardly any that do it a lot. And um, I stood up on the wave and she jumped out of this boat and she paddled onto the wave and she ended up right next to me. And I was thinking, God, you know, what are you doing here after all these years? And what are you doing in a boat as well? You'll be privileged to jump in the boat. But she became a marine biologist and she... Uh, she was working supposedly and she ended up surfing with me so we went for a beer after and if it wasn't for the ball i probably would never have had that beer with her and uh, ended up doing whatever wow. we did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we leave, leave that last bit to the imagination yeah uh, we end up doing whatever we did <laughs> yeah. kids are in bed you've already said it we know what happened <laughs> yeah, <exactly. Yeah. laughs> Two kids as well, <laughs> twice. Yeah. <Legend>. <laughs> well, yeah. God. So, with all that, with all that in mind, I'd done some maths. I'd figured out the place I needed to get in, and I'd, I got, I got the missus to agree to surf the ball with me again. It was like five thirty in the morning or something, and I'd woken her up. It was freezing cold. It was almost like November times. So it was bitter in the morning. We got in, and this wave just came out of nowhere. And it was just me and her in with this one other guy that's a complete legend. That's sort of made it happen for me and took a GoPro in and, and filmed it. And uh, as the wave came, I stuck this bloody ring 
in my wetsuit, but the box was quite big, so I couldn't put it in the chest of my wetsuit, so I had to put it under my armpit to hide the box. <laughs> and so I caught the wave, gone to one knee. Thank God she caught it, because if she hadn't, it would have been a disaster, because you only get that one chance, really. <laughs> and, uh, God, this wave lasted for long enough for me to get onto one knee, get the ring out of the armpit of my wetsuit, take it out of the box and, and hold it and propose to her. And yeah, she definitely wasn't expecting it. But uh, after the year, so I proposed to her, she said yes. It was incredible. And, and we had a really nice meal with her parents afterwards. But the, the local media, someone that I know, basically, it works in the, it works for the local newspaper and said, look, can we, can we put it in the paper because it's such a great local story? They put it in the local newspaper and about two hours later, I was phoned by the BBC and ITV and radio stations and magazines and everyone wanted to know about this story. And, and I think I was, yeah, we were on like the BBC that night, ITV that night. And I think if you looked at the videos, it was like, shit, Trump's going to be president. And oh my God, Brexit. And then like the third most watched video that day with like a million views was some guy proposes to his wife in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you uh, at least you lightened the uh, the news that day then as well. Oh my god! Yeah, we ended up on the one show. You know, we had like this ten minute section on the one show where they sort of did a big interview on us, and it was it was hilarious. I couldn't believe it. It, it wasn't meant to have gone viral. I'm a bit gutted. I didn't really mention the surf school <laughs> enough. You know, I should have been wearing an instructor. Yeah, get the advertising in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh a question you must have been asked what did, did you use the real ring or did you use a uh a fake ring because what if you dropped it i so want to lie and, and just tell you that i had the real ring on me but actually uh, it was a family heirloom cheapskate i know, <laughs> I know it fit and she loved it <laughs> but um i i just didn't want to drop it just yeah. in case so i actually went and bought a fake one and the fake one looked incredible and i think she's slightly gutted when i pulled the real one out <laughs> i like you but not enough to give you my family heirloom <laughs> <laughs> it was so uh, yeah it would have gone so wrong if i dropped it yeah so she she obviously uh she obviously said yes yeah of course she did <laughs> <laughs> i mean who could resist that you know, kind of proposal yeah and the, and the 10 years of stalking you've done prior to that since university you could, uh, <laughs> I, I see. I can hear it. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> You've been following her on Facebook for years. That's how you knew where she was. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. It was totally planned, but I can't tell her that. <laughs> Not quite as romantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then, how did you end up from? How did you then end up from going to Gloucester, and now you've got a surf school down in Newquay? Yeah, good question. It's weird, isn't it? I, I went to Harby College in Gloucester and they do like outdoor recreation courses for people that have like failed their GCSEs. <laughs> no, that's not completely true. And that was definitely my story. And um, I ended up on this course and they, they got me to be an outdoor instructor. And I, I loved bodyboarding at the time. I started surfing a little bit by that point. So I was like 16, 17. And then I went on to work in Newquay as an instructor. And then my parents bought a place in Morganport, where we are now. I, I basically lived in it whenever I didn't have to be at home. And then that was that was it, really. I got completely addicted to it and couldn't leave it for more than a couple yeah. of days. So how long has your uh, school been running down there now? So the school was running, it's been running for like 25 years or something now. But I took it on when I was 21. So I've had it for about say, 15 uh, years now. Was that a big responsibility to do at that age, like 21? Because I, if I think back to myself at 21, I could still barely tie my shoelaces up, to be honest. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I, I'd ran the place for a year for the guys that already had it. And I'd been an instructor for a couple of years prior to that there. And I knew how it worked, but I couldn't get a bank loan for love nor money. They just laughed at me. So my dad kindly sort of helped me and then made me pay every single penny back to him as soon as I could. But um, yeah, I just finished uni. I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. And they offered it me the day I'd finished my last exam. It was a bit of a rush sale because they were selling a big property to own. They just gave me a load of boards and a share. <laughs> and a website, and good luck. And, and that was that's, it. That's the kind of business deal you want, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, let's be honest, I was, I was 20, 21, and all we really wanted to do was carry on living the dream for as long as we could. So it was just a bit of a laugh, to be honest. It was just a way of meeting girls and 
surfing and trying to make a living, but I've ended up doing it and I'm 38 now. <laughs> <laughs> That's making the dream last. Definitely. That is, that is pulling, it, pulling it as long as you can. So uh, how often how often do you get to surf then yourself considering like your your teaching and stuff like that how how often do you actually get to go in and surf Yeah I get asked that question a lot actually and to be honest in the summer it's quite flat and you know there was a spell this summer for like almost 3 months where it was unshoreboardable and so we're not really that pulled into having to go surfing ourselves and and then it normally gets good when we get quiet again so if it's pumping in the summer and we haven't surfed and we've been teaching, we'll still get in at like six in the morning before work or seven o'clock at night after work. And so I, I get to surf whenever it's good still. And, you know, today I've surfed twice today, once in the morning. I've just surfed, you know, for sunset with the wife now. And so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm in whenever it's good. I won't miss a swell. And I'll, yeah, I'm a bit of a sad day. Really. I'll drive all over the surf. Oh, that's just, uh, that's rip, amazing. He's rubbing it in. Yeah. Yeah. Two surfs in, in one day. Yeah. Oh, we, we haven't been for a while now. No. I mean, my, I crashed my board recently. Um, and uh, yeah, we, <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I trashed at the Bristol Wave. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately yeah, i had a, a nice like custom longboard and it, the thing just nose dived into the floor and yeah and i cried <laughs> <laughs> it's, you can hear it can't you you hear the whole like sidewalk go no as it hits the concrete <laughs> oh yeah yeah and then this horrible dull dunk when you're under the water i was like oh no i know what's happened <laughs> oh man, you know, I'm a massive fan of the wave. You know, I really am. It's incredible, and I, but I've had you know everyone I know smash the board against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a rite of passage. Yeah, well, yeah, you know. Yeah, I just I just won't take my board in there now. I've said like I, I've surfed my own board in there once. I was just like I just use one of theirs. It's, it's safer. <laughs> Play. I bet they, they must have their own on-site repairist that just sort of does all the dings for them every day. <laughs> They've got it. Yeah, they're incredibly busy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I went on the I went on the yeah, expert saying when it first came out, I stupidly took in this board, this like a limited edition Neil Purchase Junior thing is worth almost a grand. And I such a twat really, because I took off, got missed it, basically got smashed on the floor, but I wouldn't let go of the board. So I was under for about two or three waves because they're pretty quick aren't they it's like one then the other one and i just wouldn't. yeah yeah it's great i was just bear hugging this board underwater hoping that i could get up and, and get out of everyone's way as quick as i could to do what i go <laughs> you managed to make out in one piece with the board then just yeah you know it kind of came up like a cork and just paddled off as quick as i could yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we did we've spoken about that quite a lot about the wave but like how different things have uh you know you've got that thing at the wave where you feel guilty because there's people paying you know it's a fair bit of money to go for a session there you know like a lot of people think like 50 quid for a session and then if you fuck the wave up the guy behind you you know he's gonna be like oh you know i'm, I'm wasting his money as well and then you've got the people watching you and everything it's a completely different experience but at the same time there's something really good about it as well well there's consistent waves isn't it yeah you know that you can just practice on so yeah that that that's where it's in its own his own kind of its own class really isn't it you know oh it's insane you know from it's it's absolutely yeah, there's loads of intimidation there, even for me as well especially people know you come from a surf school and you you're the owner of one and there's a lot of people looking at you thinking go on then show me something good and you Fuck up the table <laughs> and underwater for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's fucking drowning. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> but from a coach's point of view, you know, it's a dream because I'd love to stand on that platform and sort of fault correct every wave of a customer and say, right, next wave, try this. And, you know, and for videoing and, oh, my God, it's just incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, we say like, you know, things like you've got like surfing England team that go there all the time now and, something like that is just invaluable for for people like that you know like people that want to go to the olympics and people want to do competitions you get those perfect waves and as you just said video in it you can just look back at it and go all right and you can see every spot what you're doing wrong and you've got the same wave so you can in theory do exactly the same thing again and do keep doing that until you perfect it so the, oh. the possibilities are just endless yeah and i've, I've heard that are they open up another one in london no, I think there was. Um, I, I, no, I think it's what's supposed to. There's plans for one to be in Dorset. Yeah, 
I and thought I think there was something. London there's well. one, yeah, maybe for one to go in London. Mm. I did see something about that. Yeah, well, yeah, rumours in the industry is London, Manchester, Dorset. You know, there's even a rumour that one's coming up in Padstow here, but I don't know if that makes as much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Never be used. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. a real flat day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is, if you had one in, if you had one in Cornwall and it's anywhere close to where you are, you'd have to justify the price on it because – People, I think people down there would be like, why would I pay 50 quid to go there when I can go three minutes up the road? Maybe the waves aren't going to be as good, but they're free. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and I think there's definitely that element that it'll never take is, you know, the, the variety in waves and the unpredictability of your wave. And you know, every single wave in the ocean is different. And if you're waiting for the sand, you've got to read the sea. And I, I love the wave to bits. And I think it's just encouraging people into the sport. It's not doing any damage at all, but... I think there's, yeah, it'd be good. It's good to sort of come to the ocean, maybe get a lesson in the ocean as well, because some people are going to the wave and then coming to Cornwall, and there's so much more to learn about the sea before you can become a good surf. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 do you know what? That's something we've never actually thought of or spoke about before. Of like, We've spoke about, you know, you've got the people like that will just surf the wave pool, be amazing, and then they've never been in the ocean. But I've never thought that as a beginner side of it, where – they've had a lesson in the wave and then they've, you know, progressed to surf in the wave and gone on to like the intermediate or, you know, even, maybe even further than that to the advanced or something like that. And then they come to go in the ocean for the first time and it is completely different, isn't mm. it? And if you've not had a lesson in the ocean, yeah, that I've, I, that's something I've never even thought about. Yeah, because it's all about reading, reading the waves and stuff. I mean, to, to be honest, that's what, when you're, when you're a surfer and you go into the sea, that is that is part of the fun as well, isn't it? You know, I do quite enjoy that, you know, hunting the waves down and stuff and sitting out the lineup and not having to think, shit, I've got to get my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, totally. Imagine some guy from Bristol coming to Cornwall. He's got his suit on. He's just got out of the car. And he's, he's rocked up. Where are the lockers, mate? And where do you queue for the next <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah where, where, where's the queue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do I pay? Oh no, mate, it's, it's free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why you, is you, the you, floor not concrete? Why is the floor not concrete? <laughs> yeah, the only problem is you've got to pay sixty-seven pounds to park in the car park for the day. Oh yeah, that's the yeah. problem. Hey, well, yeah, that's that's kicking off, isn't it? I think. Where is it now? Is it Widmouth or somewhere? Somewhere's charging a hell of a lot. Yeah, there was um, Saunton last year. It was something like seventeen pound to park there for the day, yeah. Um, and I think there was somewhere like viewed or something like that that was, was not dissimilar. Um, yeah, it was was kicking off quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I also heard as well um, uh, that it, it might be in Nuki actually. Um, if they they put in like height restriction barriers so people can't get vans in, I, I can't remember what, what bay it was at, um, but they put like height restrictions in. I don't know if it was temporary or not. It was a, another podcast I listened to about van lifers and they, they went to go surfing uh, in Nuki. It might have been Fistral. And the car park that weekend had height restrictions in because they were trying to limit the amount of motorhomes turning up. And you're like, surfers turn up in vans. You know, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Mate, totally. That's, you know, shock. I can see some places I've been to in Ireland have got it just because, you know, you, you can pretty much stay anywhere you want in Ireland. And I think they're trying to stop people from staying in one spot for too long. But yeah, you know, to not be able to park up for the day at Fistral or I know Watergate, you know, you can get in at Watergate still. And I'm anywhere near me, like Morgan Port and Constantine, all our locals haven't got barriers. But I have heard, and maybe it is Fistral, you know, that, that had it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So, so do you get to. Do you normally just surf where you are or do you normally travel up and down around your area quite a lot? Because a lot of people will just stick to their own patch and then we live on the beach here. So like, so if it's on here, it would definitely just go in here. It's so easy and practical. But if the, you know, the swell is not in the right direction, it's going to be better on the South Coast. I'm, I'm definitely up for a bit of a mission. And you know, I surfed the South Coast three times during that big hurricane we had recently. So yeah. Yeah, I'll go all over really, wherever it's going to be best. <laughs> and uh, what sort of what sort of boards your preferred board to go to, and what sort of wave height is your sort of preferred? You know, if you could set your perfect conditions, what would you, what would it be? What would your board and your wave height be? 
Good, good question. Now I'm 38 with a slightly dodgy back and a dad of two kids. I've probably got to <laughs> sadly admit that I've just bought a 6.4 with about 38 litres in it <laughs> instead of my... <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I'm still, I'll still get in when it's big. You know, like if, if, if it's, you know, Morgan Paul's only handles like up to six foot and then it's just, it just closes out and doesn't break very well. But I'll still go in here when it's a solid six and but I'm definitely, I don't think I'll ever see myself surfing the crib, but I'm just, I'm not fit enough. We love beer too much to train for that. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, do you, I, I want to go down, I've never been down to watch it when it's been going off massively down there. And that's one of the things, I, you know, I'd love to just go down there and have a look at that, which I'll do sometimes. Is that, you know, something you, you do when it's going, when it's going big, it's like, there's huge gatherings there. Yeah, there was there was this one time, wasn't there? We were sort of just coming out of lockdown. It was a bit weird, and you you weren't really meant to be outside with too many people. And it, the cribber absolutely went off, and there was about three hundred people standing in the same place, just <laughs> in awe of this wave. It was it's probably conditions they haven't seen for years and years. It was like no wind. It was like a twenty five foot swell, and it was just too perfect not to surf. And, and actually, when you go to places like that and you see it up front, I've been to Mullabore in Ireland as well, and it just you know, it's definitely not my game. It's it's amazing. There's definitely huge consequences to getting it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we spoke to um, Peter Conroy that uh, surfs Mullet Moor, and like he's saying about like being held down there and stuff like that. And it just bloody terrified me. Just yeah. the story of how long he was like, like he said by the th- like the third the third wave that hit him and he was still underwater or something. <laughs> and I was like, to fuck that. <laughs> no way, no. Not even Wim Hof can get you out of that one. <laughs> yeah. no, that's it. So um, what some of our listeners, um, what they draw on is other surfers experiences and stuff. So what would be your worst ever wipeout? And, you know, kind of, did you do something wrong for it to be a, the bad wipeout or was it the conditions or, you know, what happened? Oh, yeah I suppose there's like two memorable wipeouts where I've I've thought shit I really do need to get back up and you know a two wave hold down is rare to be honest and I've had one here on a big day at, at low tide I remember hitting the bottom and I was really far out I couldn't believe I'd, I was that deep and I remember sort of grabbing the leash and putting myself up but not thinking I was going to die at any point but just very happy to be up to the surface again and then <laughs> and then Indo yeah I suppose I was like 23 and pretty fit and went out with some gnarly guys that I surf with quite a lot and I should keep stop comparing myself to them because they are charges and I got bullied into taking this gun out in Indo and I don't even know who we were but you know it's like a train's going past when the way it goes past and it was basically my turn to go I was in I was in the spot and I, I probably just didn't really have the balls to do it and I think I hesitated and just took off on it and then air dropped down and I remember hitting the reef and then I, I couldn't get back up because when a wave that big runs across a shallow reef it kind of takes you with it for a while and you don't come up as quickly as you would in Cornwall and I definitely remember that so yeah if you ever go abroad and you haven't surfed reefs before get ready for a slightly bigger hold down in certain situations <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I don't think anyone's ever said that either actually like we've heard, had people on that have like you know we've surfed in it was amazing and blah 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 not anyone's ever said that about the reef, you know, no. that it just holds you down a lot longer. I mean, it makes sense because when you watch like surf footage and surf films, when they, when they film under the water, you do see the surfers getting dragged along, don't you? Under yeah. the water. Yeah, yeah. So it does make sense. It's bloody terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Should laughs> be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've only got a few waves in Cornwall that do that. Everyone knows about them, you know, they're quite famous reefs, but like, yeah, no, most of the beach breaks, you can just fall off when it's big and swim through it and come out the other side. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. I mean, you know, like being held down, like you say before, like when you're in deep water and you hit the floor, that's terrifying enough. That's, I think that's about my limit where I'll yeah. go, uh, yeah, I'm getting out now. I'm, uh, I've had enough now. <laughs> yeah. like, that hesitation, you know, of that. Um, we spoke of one recently, which we had at Putzborough, and as as I went to drop in, I thought I had that little thought that went, "No, this is too big," and tried to pull off. <laughs> and that hesitation, everything just went wrong from there. Yeah, you know, I think that's the thing, isn't it? You have to go in with the right attitude. You have to get your big wave game on, and you have to you have to commit so much more and paddle so much harder. And once you start going, you you kind of 
you've got, you got that split second where you can still pull back. But if you think you're going to go, you've got to go with so much more commitment, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So the, the next question then is the opposite to that. So can you remember your, your best wave? Oh, there's, a, there's definitely a few moments. You know, I've only been barreled like three times legitimately inside with the view and had a good one. And, you know, and that was in Portugal. A, a Balear, which isn't even, you know, renowned for its for its waves but um and then another one yeah you know indo making some of those drops and and having so much power in the wave i definitely never forget some of my rides at you know, uluwatu and places like that and then you know the seven ball you know i i, I get just as much of a buzz from some of the long rides i get there and i do in the ocean so those yeah those are my three memorable ones apart from you know the local when it absolutely goes off and there's always this one day we talk about as mates and it was just the day that the, the wave here broke the best we've ever seen it you know further out the banks were insane it was it was five foot the swell wasn't really forecasted and it was just just us out and that's those are the days that now make it for me those magical little moments that you're not expecting when it's just a group of mates yes. and you're just sharing waves yeah well we've had we've had one of the i think we've had one of those days haven't we where yeah. it was it was on the like you say banks were working and we were further out than everyone else and it was a lovely summer's day and there was four or five of us out there yeah i think it was five of us five of us out there and we're all mates and it was like it was working in such a perfect way where you get on the wave and you'd ride it for a bit and then you'd come off the side and there was then the wave would die down where it was working on the bank and you wouldn't have to paddle that far to get back out and it's probably about you know three between three and five weren't they that day yeah you know and it's that, that those perfect days, and I think a you, lot you of don't people, have to be anywhere else. Yeah, then, a lot of know? people we've spoken to have said that same thing. Of like, we've asked, like, you know, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be if you could surf anywhere? And a lot of people say, you know, in the UK at their local break or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Nobody's ever said the seven bore though yet. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because the wave doesn't the wave could be really good. But it's like hitting a golf ball, isn't it? Doing an amazing turn. If you hit a golf ball perfectly, it just goes ting and it goes in the right direction. You can do these turns that are just perfect in your mind where you've hit the lip at the right moment and you've driven all your weight into the rail and you've come back on yourself and you've sent loads of spray and you just, you know, and if you do that three times on one way, that could be the best wave of your life, even though the wave wasn't particularly good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's how, how you perform on that wave. Yeah, yeah. I don't think about yeah, that. And either, I, I suppose every single person's different because, like, it depends what you like. If, you know, because we longboard, so if I get on a wave and just I'm just riding that wave, as the longer it lasts, the more enjoyable that wave is to me. And whereas, like you say, like turns and, you know, hitting the lip and everything like that that you're doing on – on that wave, if you Shredding. do that, yeah, yeah well, literally, yeah, I, was, I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, if you're like just tearing up the wave, that could be the best wave of your life. And the guy next to you just stood still on his board, and that could be the best wave of his life. So it's a very personal thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like making love, isn't it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I had about 15 things that popped into my head to say, yes. and I was like, I can't say any of them on this podcast. <laughs> The mood is right, and you're on the right board, and conditions are perfect. <laughs> and, and, and if there's a bit of a dry kids. spell, you can go and pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear, it's gone there, hasn't it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, like, do you want us to tell us about your uh, your surf school, like what it's called, and where people can? get in contact with you if they want to come have a lesson down there with you oh yeah we're in a we're in a nice little beach called morgan Porth, and it's right in between newquay and padstow it's not as well known as watergate which is next door to us and uh, it gets the same swell direction as watergate and fistral and places like that it's just a little bit quieter and the surf school's called king surf and the boys that run it with me and, and girls um have been surfing for so long you know the average age is almost sort of above 35 now and They've got so much knowledge behind them that we try and specialise in, in offering slightly more advanced lessons to people if they need fine tuning with some of their manoeuvres and things like that. But yeah, I've been going for a long, long time, and uh, it's all booking online now, isn't it? We're taking taking bookings on the website less than more than we are on the phone. That's cool. So, well, me and Pete, um, we have some plans, don't we, to go down to Newquay 
like next in, in 2022. We've got a few people we want to interview down there. So when we're down that way, we'll see if we can pop in and, uh, and meet you in person. Oh, mate, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, you boys are more than welcome. I'll just take you off. Do you know when the one thing we teach that a lot of people haven't mastered yet, and we don't give away too many secrets, but just reading a, a forecast, you know, and picking the right place to go so you're not wasting your time in choppy ways where you can't get out back. And so, yeah, mate, yeah, definitely. You know, we can have a little look at the forecast when you're down and we can meet at a beach that'll be good and go for a surf together. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah that'd be can, great. You can teach us how to be less shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the best surfer is the one with the biggest smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that. That's me then, because uh, I've always got a stupid grin on my face. <laughs> people, people always used to ask me if I was stoned all the time when I was younger. Are you stoned, mate? And no, no, I just just look like this. <laughs> just, that's how I look. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's great. Though. I love it. I'm on board a lot. You know, I've just been out in the log. It's tiny here today, and so I do, yeah, I don't really mind what I ride. Like yeah, twenty a log. And, a foamy most of the time and definitely it's all about just being out there and, oh boys you should definitely yeah we're also gonna have to look at surfing seven ball at some point as well so yeah, if you're if you're ever heading up this way to to surf a seven ball then it gives a shake because we'd love to go in with someone with a bit of knowledge so we don't die <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the thing actually this is such a good question because even though the muddy brothers are protective of the river if you went on Facebook and said, look, boys, I've never done it before. Where do I go? They're so aware of how dodgy it can be and how like shit your experience could be if you get it wrong, that they they quite quickly pipe up and say, right, you want to go here and you want to go here and you want to get in 10 minutes before the wave's due in case it comes early. And they're, they're definitely very nice at giving away information that will help you have a good time instead of giving away secret spots. So you know, I'll definitely go in with you and take to the right place and get the timing right and give you a few tips about where to where to stand before it comes. Because you can stand in the wrong place and miss the way, which would be gutting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah because I mean, it's it seems like a hell of a lot more effort than going surfing in the sea. Um, so if you if you've got one chance to get that wave. You, oh. there's a lot of pressure on there as well isn't well there, yeah it's like a military operation if you've got to work out how you're getting back and everything yeah it's it is honestly nuts you know like you've got to get up most of the tides really early in the morning so it's almost a spring tide at like five in the morning you're getting in the river when it's dark and you don't know where you are and you've got a soggy brown muddy wet suit that stinks at the river seven to put back on again the second day and then it is quite savage Oh. <laughs> you get it so wrong, you know. It's definitely something we're gonna we're gonna have a go at, and yeah. we'll have to film it and um, try and make it go viral. <laughs> you always come Two out. idiots on the ball. <laughs> yeah. You always come out with a funny story because it's it's a bit of a pub crawl as well. You know, you get in at a lot of pubs, so you can have a sneaky pie in between, and you can kind of get in, and then if you miss it, you can get back in the car and, and catch the wave up in one place because it's a big horseshoe. So you know, but there's a couple of red lights that might need to be jumped but it oh, is doable <laughs> <laughs> i like i like the fact that also at the beginning of this you said that you get in the you often have to get in the water at like four or five in the morning because when it's dark but you also said you can go for a pint beforehand <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know i've heard of drinking and staying out late but like starting that early in the morning <laughs> so it's just ridiculous well, that's foster for you isn't it no <laughs> <laughs> but no god it is bad you know i'll go I'll, I'll go back and catch up with loads of friends because i'm from there so I'll, I'll turn it into a weekend sort of surf and booze and catch up weekend i've never really done it without being hung over to be honest <laughs> <laughs> oh man so yeah well that's absolutely brilliant um you know thanks for coming on and chatting to us about seven ball proposing to your wife and your surf school um like I said, if anyone wants to find you, you're down in uh, New Key. Yeah, Morgan, Morgan Porth. Porth. And it's King Surf, isn't it? Yeah. Are oh, you legends? Yeah, definitely. We're... And you're on Instagram and Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Even though I'm getting on a bit, I, I know what that is. And we've got a little page. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I feel really old now because I'm older than you. And you're saying like, oh, yeah, I'm old. I know what that is. I'm thinking, <laughs> fucking hell, I'm ancient. <laughs> I almost did Snapchat, you know, the other day. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, that's way that's way beyond <laughs> us. <laughs> Whatever makes you TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! 
That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, Pete. Oh, boys, you legends. It's actually really nice. I've never met you. It's classic. I can't wait to meet you now. I see all the, the faces behind the screen. Like, <laughs> we'll definitely go for a beer. Thanks for that, Pete. What a cool guy. I mean, we haven't had anybody on talking about Seven Ball yet. So yeah, well, good. Phil mentioned it when he was on, Phil Williams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Pete surfed it quite a lot and growing up near there as well, you know, surfed yeah. it a lot. I mean, it is super dangerous. So I really hope we get to go and try it, but yeah. with him. So yeah, can protect with us. someone that knows what they're doing, first of all, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, you know, you should. we should actually say on there, like he said, you know, it's not something that you can just turn up and surf. You've really got to research it. And, you know, the community that he said are quite open open to people and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, to helping so, people yeah. and giving information, yeah, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, so you're not going to get in trouble. So don't be a dick and just turn up and try and surf a seven ball yeah, with no research or anything. Or yeah. <laughs> what did he say about quick release leashes? Yeah, because it gets tangled. The leashes get tangled around logs and debris and stuff. That's pretty scary. Yeah, because it's not like you fall off into like if you if you you know, wipe out on a wave and then there's like at least a little bit of calm b- before the next wave hits. Yeah. This is just a constant flow. So if you come off, you're just going to get dragged along. Yeah. Well, or if, if you think, caught, if you think if you're on a longboard as well, which hmm. most of them are, yeah, your leash is like trailing behind you, like five foot behind you as well. So yeah, you get yeah. snagged. You know, you, you almost want like a two-inch leash. Or <laughs> no leash. Yeah, yeah. It's probably yeah, but then you got no. You have to like swim five miles down That's the stream true. to get your board. Yeah, if you come off, your flotation device is gone. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and you know, then he's uh, you know talking about his surf school and living, moved down to Newquay, and uh, I tell you, he's got such a great life. Like when he came on, and we always chat to our guests for a little bit first, and uh, before we actually start recording. And he's like, yeah, I've gone out for two surfs today. Yeah. Like, oh, what? Two surfs today? We haven't yeah. done two surfs in two months. Yeah, it's been a bit ridiculous, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's yeah he's got a really nice life. And he feels like a real, like, like a proper surf dude. Yeah. I've got that feeling. Yeah, real nice chilled vibe. Yeah. Yeah, lovely guy. And, uh, yeah, check them out. That's King's Surf School. And they're in... Morganporth, which is just... Just outside of Newquay. Just outside of Newquay, Newquay yeah. 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 So yeah, that's that for the interview. We also we were on just before Christmas or just after Christmas. I can't remember. Just when it before was. Christmas. Yeah, it just was. before Christmas, we spoke to the guys from the Aging Surfer podcast. Yeah. You know, that's nice to be told that you're an aging surfer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well, so we got invited onto another podcast, which is uh, really strange for us, wasn't it? I, was, yeah. I mean, I was nervous. Yeah, I was nervous. I, like, <laughs> I, like, I don't get nervous anymore doing this this way when we're talking to people. But it's quite nice to like have that feeling of how they feel when they like because loads of people say to us, oh, "I was so nervous before we came yeah. on." And yeah, yeah. So it's it's quite nice to have that that experience of what it's like. Yeah. So go and check it out. And so the the kind of idea of the of the podcast is your perfect session. So what's really fun with this is designing your own perfect session. Like that's how I when I listen to other other like episodes of theirs, I'm constantly think oh I, oh I would do that or I would yeah. have that so, and the questions are really good even down to what era you would surf in which is just such a such yeah. a cool question that you'd never think of yeah and if you're anything like me you just ramble your way through the whole lot <laughs> <laughs> just babble yeah so you can go on and uh, listen to mine and Pete's perfect sessions yeah so that's the Aging Surfer podcast and they are on all your podcast platforms and it's the agingsurfer.co.uk yeah we had a really good time with those guys uh, just uh, just another note on that if we get distracted when you're listening to it you you can hear that we're distracted they were making animal balloons weren't they yeah, balloon, balloon animals, animals sorry yeah. balloon animals as we're talking for a laugh and yeah. it was so funny and my concentration on stuff like that is awful anyway so they're talking to me and i've just completely zoned out and i'm just watching the guy in the background making a bloody balloon giraffe or something like that whatever it was or a balloon dog you're like oh yeah giraffe. Oh, sorry what was the question <laughs> yeah. yeah really bad um yeah so yeah go and check that out and also you know if you're going to book a session at the wave don't forget to head over to our website support the show page and book the wave through us and we get a little kickback from your booking fee yeah another way to support the show we've mentioned in previous episodes is to join buy me a coffee so we won't go through the tiers where every single episode we do um but just to give you an idea of the discount codes on there we have discount codes from cosin golden boy north core log finco yeah uh, adrenaline athlete 
pulse roll and also there's a discount code on there for you to use in our own shop as well if you want to buy any stickers or anything yeah uh, that's just to name a few and there's gonna be more added constantly yeah as we get them there'll be more added yeah i think that's it then pretty much it for today's show so thanks for listening don't forget head over to north core and use that discount code uk surf show 2022 and that will get you 15% off anything you order there. Or head over to Slab, which is www.slabsurf.co.uk and use the discount code UKSURFSHOW15, all uppercase, all one word, and get 15% off anything you order. Yeah, so that's it for today's show, and we will see you next time. Cheers. Cheers, bye.